Hey, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a new video called The Long View. Before we get started, this video is for informational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security that I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. All right, so The Long View. Uh, let me explain what this video is and what it is trying to do. So what I am looking to do is create um, uh, a way to show relative strength on a longer term time scale. And for this, it'll be weekly charts. Okay, that'll be my main time frame for this video and this series of videos. Um, and so it's gonna be weekly charts looking for relative strength. Um, I think that this type of video is made for the guy or gal who is working full time or really busy, doesn't have a chance to watch the markets intensely every day, all the time. Um, it's made for the person that, that is time strapped and, and just can't do it all. So there's a way to participate yet uh, and, and then hopefully outperform uh, the markets and, and, um, and still have a busy life like most of us have um you know so i think another function of this is that to do this i'm using etfs exclusively um because i believe there's some risk mitigation in using etfs um as opposed to a single stock which has greater risk uh involved in it um you know and and this system is going to follow the trend, right? We're trend followers in, in, in general. And so what this is going to look for relative strength and follow a trend using ETFs on longer term time scales and um, time frames, and hopefully outperform the um, general market and we'll call SBX as the general market at this time. All right. So let's talk about the chart setup. What do we have on this chart? Um, I like using the Japanese candlestick. So that, that's what we have here. Um, the green is the eight week EMA. Again, on the weekly time frame, And the red line is the 13 week EMA, okay? Um, I always put volume on my chart. It's interesting uh, to me to see what's going on with volume. Um, really, that's a secondary indicator. indicator. I'm not quite as interested in it, to be honest with you, as opposed to price. Um, and underneath here, this is the trader line relative strength uh, line. Okay, so I'm on trading view, and this is um, their relative strength line. And this looks like outperformance. Now, I have this line set to the SPX. You can change it um, if you wanted to, but I, I'm using SPX as my, um, as my uh, default. And as you can see, it's pretty much, you know, straight as, as to be expected, right? So yeah, it's looking for outperformance, um, this relative strength line, right? Now, the line is more important. The number of line doesn't really matter. It's the direction it's moving in, which is important, okay? So that's a relative strength line. Again, it's the direction. Is something outperforming or underperforming the general market? All right, and the general market being the SPX. Again, this is a trend following system and these moving averages will be my essence of trend, okay? Um, so it's about signals here. So what am I looking for? I'm obviously looking for outperformance and I'm looking, I'm using the trend uh, trader line, uh, relative strength line to show me outperformance, right? Um, I'm looking for upwardly sloping, bullishly aligned moving averages, right? That makes sense. We always look for upwardly sloping, uh, bullishly aligned moving averages. Um, we are looking for base breakouts and consolidations because we still want to manage risk and want to jump in just anywhere. If, you know, that's usually not good. So we are still looking for those normal consolidations and technical analysis that we're all used to doing. Um, we're all looking for that. And, um, and I think the sell is going to be, um, I say, I think I, the sell is going to be uh, close below the 13 week moving average, which is roughly the 65 day EMA, which is usually where I like to put the sell. A lot of people put it at the 50. I like the 65 day better. It gives it a little bit more room. So a close below the 13 week EMA is the sell. 
right? So if it's, you know, Friday afternoon and we're close to the close and, you know, the, the bar looks like this, I would sell near the close, right? Because we know that it's going to close red more than likely. All right. So that is the criteria. Those are the rules. And so now I have the first week already set up for you guys. All right. So these are all ETFs. Um, and let's go through them. And first one is PBNJ. PBNJ, right? So this is Invesco Dynamic Food and Beverage ETF. And as you can see, um, we have an uptrend, a consolidation, a breakout. Again, volume, it, it really doesn't bother me all that much. I am looking at this. This is the outperformance we're talking about. Um, looks amazing. And I did pull up each one of these holdings just so you guys can see what you're buying. Because it's really important to know what, what are we buying, right? Um, and these are names that you know. Archer Daniels, Hershey's, General Mills, uh, Keurig, Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Mondelez, Kroger, right? So that's PB and J. It's just now breaking out of this consolidation. So it looks really good. Outperformance has been happening now since, you know, since December. Um, you know, why not? One of the reasons why I do put volume on here, and I guess I should mention this now, is that some of these ETFs are thin. So they have to have enough volume to, to be able to buy and trade them. I mean, listen, we're not moving the markets, right? But you still don't want, you know, 30,000 shares a day. You know, you want to have 300,000 shares a day on average. And this one's been picking up lately, um, uh, for better or for worse. So, um, so again, it is liquid enough um, for me. I can be able to get in and out at a reasonable um, clip because I'm not, you know, buying this type of volume a day. So that's good, I guess. Um, anyway, so again, uh, we always have to watch volume, make sure these ETFs are liquid enough. All right. But the first one's PB and J, right? PBJ. Uh, going with this theme, um, Moo is the next one. This is the VanX agribusiness. Again, it's a beautiful consolidation. It's the breakout, very liquid, um, which is really good. And um, again, we're getting the separation of the moving averages as it's breaking out. That's exactly what you want to see. Looking at Mu, uh, we have deer, bear, nutrient, zoetis, um, there's Archer Daniels again, and you're going to see some overlap in these. That's just going to happen because they're ETFs and they're, and listen, they're going up. The chances are some of them have the same things. There's your Corteva in there, Tyson, Tractor Supply. Again, you could read the rest of these. Um, so that's Mu. That's the agribusiness ETF. Again, that kind of goes with PB and J, and I'm kind of putting these together in, um, in you know, because when I research these in, in logical groupings, right? Um, moving on, we're gonna look at some oil names now, right? OIH, the oil services. Again, just breaking out of this consolidation. There's your outperformance. Very liquid. Uh, you already have nice little separation. Moving averages. Trend is aligned. Beautiful to look at. Um, looking at OIH. Again, Schlumberger, Halliburton, Baker Hughes, Patterson, Heinrich Payne, you know, and, and again, you can read the rest. Again, these are names that are really hot and going up. You don't have any single stock risk in this, but you're able to participate in the sector. Um, and I think it's a really good way, especially again, for people like me, people like you, everyday people that want to outperform the market. I, I think this is the way to do it. Um, so that's OIH. Next up is going to be XOP. So here's XOP, right? And there's your base. There's your breakout. Um, there's your relative strength line going up. Very liquid name here. It looks great, right? XOP, why not participate? Um, here's the top holdings, top 10 holdings. And you can see, you know, Occidental, you know, Marathon, Apache, Interior Resources, Devon, PBF, uh, you know, and everybody else in there. Um, so again, there could be some overlap sometimes, but overall, um, I try to keep them separate ideas. All right, so now we have uh, agribusiness and we have uh, food and staples type stuff, oil and gas stuff is, is taken care of. Next up, there's a healthcare group that looks really good right now. This is IHF, healthcare providers, okay? Again, there's your outperformance, right? Um, little thin on the liquidity here okay so i would you know obviously you know if you're if you're going to push this market around you're, you're a pretty big player i'm not pushing this market around so um so but again i like the way this looks at looks pretty good um and looking at this one 
we are looking at United Healthcare, CVS, Anthem, Centene, Cigna, HCA, Humana, you know, Molina, the, uh, Quest Diagnostics. Again, names we know every day, and they're outperforming. And let's uh, let's say CVS decides to tank. Well, again, it's fifteen percent rest, so it's going to hurt the 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 the, the, um, the ETF, but it's not. 100%, like if you just bought CVS outright by itself. So again, you are a little bit protected in that. Um, and the group is really starting to outperform. And the breakout is just now happening. You're going to start to see the alignment. You know, if you start to do this, you know, the bullish alignment is starting to happen. You can see the turn right here. So this is looking pretty good. Okay, this was IHF. All right. Let's keep going. XAR is next. This is an aerospace and defense fund, right? Unfortunately, there is a war going on right now, and these tend to do well. And you see the volume coming in the last two weeks has been pretty spectacular. Um, you know, very liquid. There's your outperformance. There's your trend line break. So there's your signal. There's your cross. It's got everything that we're looking for. And looking at XAR, um, Mercury Systems, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, L3 Harris, uh, General Dynamics, Raytheon, Maxar. I mean, so here's the names, here's the weightings. So you're getting a piece of everything as the whole sector is outperforming the S&P. Um, again, plenty of liquid, everything looks pretty good. Uh, that was XAR. Okay, next up is gonna be BOAT, B-O-A-T. This is a newer ETF for me. Um, it has decent volume as of recently coming in. Um, you know, we'll see if that continues on again. This is a brand new one just started in August. Um, but this is Sonic Shares Global Shipping. And shipping has been crazy hot. Look at this relative strength line. Um, the breakout was back here. It's already kind of, you know, maybe is it extended? Maybe, maybe a little extended, right? Um, but this is definitely one that you would, you know, you know, it's almost 11% to the to the 13-week um, moving average. So again, you'll have to decide where you or if you want to enter this one. Wait for a pullback, sideways consolidation. Maybe just say, you know what? I'm going to take a smaller position size, enter now, and maybe add to it if it does pull back. Because I don't know if it's going to keep going or not. I mean, it's up one, two, three, four, five. It's up six weeks in a row, right? I mean, there will be a pullback at some point. We just don't know if it's going to be next week or 10 weeks from now, right? Um, but it looks unbelievably good. Um, beautiful breakout. And looking at this one, oh, wait, let's go back real fast before we look at this one. You see the relative strength. You see the, the volume again, a little bit thin, but there's been a lot of volume coming in. So um, there's that, all right? And looking at where you at, both, there you are. All right, so this one has some, um, um, you know, foreign uh, companies there, Hong Kong, Japan, there's your Zim, I'm sure you're familiar with that, uh, some more Hong Kong and Japan, that's probably Greece, Hong Kong, there's your Star Bulk, there's Matson. so um, this one has a little international exposure to it, okay, that's fine, again, size it accordingly, right, because we never know what's going to happen, um, but again, it's hard to deny this type of outperformance, and you know, you're not going to get these humongous gains, most likely, but it's up 23% in six weeks, right? I mean, compared to the rest of the market, that's fantastic. Um, so that's both B-O-A-T. Moving on, there's uh, R-E-Z, I'm sorry. Here's R-E-Z, which is the uh, Residential and Multi-Sector Real Estate ETF. All right. And again, this has what we are looking for. Um, it has enough liquidity. It shows its outperformance. You know, we have a trend line break here, right? Um, as this is moving out of this uh, little kind of flag look to it, um, you know, we're getting the cross. 92.10 is actually crossing right now. So starting next week, as long as it stays above this area, the cross will be next week. Um, so again, that's the alignment of, shred, of trend in a bullish way. Um, so looks great, right? Again, is it, this going to be the fastest mover? It may not be the fastest mover, but it's going in the right direction and we're going to be making money off of it. And if we're wrong, we're going to know we're wrong and we're not going to lose that much money on it, hopefully. Um, but again, residential and multi-sector real estate, um, you know, let's take a look at what their holdings are. 
res. It should be this one right here. All right, public storage, well tower, um, community, different REITs, uh, extra space storage. Um, again, just a whole bunch of properties and, and apartments and, and, and rents are through the roof right now. So I could definitely see how this could outperform very nicely for a long time because rents are crazy expensive right now and real estate's really hot. So um, that's res. All right, let's keep going. Uh, next up is going to be gold miners, of course, GDX. You know, they are just breaking out of this beautiful little downtrend right here. You know, came back, retest, breakout, great. Um, plenty of liquidity in here. And there's your outperformance. There's your trend alignment. Exactly what you want to see in this. Again, is it too extended now? You make that decision if, if you know, if you think it is or isn't. Um, but this is a nice little breakout right here. And, um, and it's definitely trending in the right direction, okay? And so let's look at GDX, which is right here. And Newmont, Barrett Gold, Franco Nevada, you know, Wheat and Precious Metals, you know, these are all names that, that if you know the, the sector you're familiar with, you know, and it's the ones you want to be a part of. And now it's heavily weighted up here, right? But you get exposure to everything. Um, and that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. Um, so that was gold miners in there. Not only are gold miners in there, but XME, which is metals and mining ETF. This one broke out really three, four weeks ago. Again, is it too extended? You'll have to decide on that. For me, this probably is. Um, it went up 14% last week. Um, so just don't think that just because these are ETFs that they can't move. They absolutely can move. And it's about 19% from the, the 13 week. Um, again, that'd be a little too extended for me at this point, uh, looking for maybe an inside week, right? Some consolidation, let these kind of catch up. Um, and then uh, and then maybe start a position, but again, it's definitely one we have to be watching, if nothing else. Again, it satisfies liquidity, trend, um, trend, you know, the breakout, unfortunately already happened a couple of weeks ago, and also the outperformance, okay? Now I'm uh, looking at XME, we have, Coal names in Peabody and Arch. We have aluminum names. We have um, you know steel names in there. Heckle Mining, Royal Gold. So there's some gold miners in there. Steel Dynamics, Freeport. So you see, it's really a lot of different things that's just going up. Um, and again, there will be some overlap. It's just the way these things are made. Okay. Um, next up is GUNR Gunner, which is a natural resources fund. Okay. Again, this one already did break out also. But it does satisfy plenty of liquidity, trend alignment, outperformance, and let's just see how far it is from the 13 week. Uh, 7%. So it's not crazy extended from the from the uh, from the 13 week. Um, and now let's look at what it's, its holdings. Okay, so you see some oil and gas, then there's a nutrient, then Archer Daniels and BHP, Cretiva, Rio Tinto, Vale, Freeport. Um, Glencore, etc. So this particular one is in a bunch of other ones, right? We saw this in Moo, we saw this in the OIH, I believe it was for the, the oil and gas names. XME has some of these names in there. Um, you know, so so you have to decide is how do you want to build it, right? Do you want something like Gunner that maybe you could get into now and XME you couldn't? Maybe you do a half position in Gunner and, and, and wait for XME to consolidate a little bit and you could jump into XME also. Um, You'll have to see how you want to build it up, but but this is kind of an interesting one because it kind of merges a little bit from a bunch of different funds. And again, the outperformance is 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 there, right? The liquidity is there, the trend alignment is there. Um, again, it broke out a little bit from this kind of cup and handle look to it, but that's just the way it is. All right. And the last one that I'm going to talk about tonight is SLX. This is the steel ETF. Um, yeah, so you see it's building this nice little consolidation pattern in an uptrend, plenty of liquidity, um, enough liquidity at least. Uh, and again, there's your outperformance. So I'll just take that out of there because I don't need that. Yeah, so so there's really exactly what you want to see, right? Again, is it going to come back and make another um, you know, higher low or is it going to break out? I, I don't know. Right, it moved eight percent last week and almost four percent the week before, and it is now almost twelve percent extended. So again, I could definitely see how this could pull back a little bit. Again, maybe an inside week, 
That would be pretty nice, right? Nice little inside week right there. And then bust out. All right. Um, looking at steel, um, sorry, SLX. Um, again, Vail, there's Vail, there's Rio Tinto, New Core, um, United States Steel Corp. You know, who else? Uh, there's Cleveland Cliffs, Steel Dynamics in there, and so on and so forth. Okay. And, and there's your percentage of holding, the percent for this whole thing. Okay. Um, so there you go. There's two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 ETFs that are outperforming the SP. And so, again, just to reiterate, you know, if you're working full time, if you are, you know, strapped for time period, and you don't want to have to look at the markets every day, all the time, you know, I think this is the way to go. Participate, outperform, make some money. Don't get caught up in the fin twit, you know, you know, oh, I made a thousand percent today. I made whatever, um, you know, that kind of FOMO, that kind of, um, that kind of like almost makes you feel inadequate, right? If you didn't, couldn't trade like that, like, oh, I didn't, you know, make money today. And then this guy did, or this girl did over here, you know, it makes you feel, um, you know, like you're doing something wrong. And, and really we're not, sometimes you just don't have the time to do it. Sometimes, you know, you just, um, you know, sometimes you just need to go with an ETF instead of an individual stock because individual stocks can be more erratic than the ETF, right? You get a little more calmness, controlness, um, it's not even a word. I don't think so. Um, but you get a, you, you understand what I'm saying, you know? So anyway, so this is the new thing. Um, I am going to be doing these videos every week. I'm going to follow the trends. I, I go through and, and look at the relative. I went through hundreds of ETFs to come up with this list, to bring it down to 12 hundreds. I mean, used, my database is, is, is very large. Um, so with that being said, um, Good luck. I hope you like this. Leave me some comments below. Let me know what you think about this new uh, new style. Let me, tell me if it's going to work for you. If you're going to give it a try, let me know if you don't, if you're not going to give it a try. Um, you know, again, it's no skin off my back. I'm just, you know, this is just educational. This is not telling you what to do, but, uh, but I would love to hear how you're using it, if you're using it and um, and, uh, and and watch for, for future updates. I'm going to try to do one of these um, every week because uh, again, your weekly charts, so that's beautiful. It'd be a closed, ca nice closed candle at the end of the week. And um, yeah, so I anyway, appreciate everything y'all do. Follow me on, on Twitter, Alpha Charge 365 on YouTube. If you haven't liked and subscribed, now's the time to do it. Um, appreciate that. And y'all have a great week.